I want to share with you uh, about a parable of Jesus who give us a pictures of these days and the coming days. Uh, in this parable, we can see some elements. We can see a man who is the owner. We can see servants that receive, give from the owner. And we can see the final day. In Matthew chapter 25, starting reading in verse 14, we read in the name of Jesus. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered into them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he had he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he had had received one, went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and renounced with them. And so he that had received five talents came and broke other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things, enter you into the joys of your Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joys of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you uh, that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not strewed. I was afraid. And I, when I hid thy talent in the earth, lo, there you hast that is thine. Lord, his Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I sow it not and gather where I have not strewed. You ought therefore to have put my money into exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received mine with my, my mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give into him which have ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he has. Uh, in the several lessons that we can find in this parable, 
I point my view in one phrase. You shall have abundance. This, the two first and second servant receive a word from uh, the man, from the owner of excellence. The fact is, every one of us and everyone, every people, every person in the world, every one of us, we want to be successful. No any one of us want to be defeated. The mind, the bright of every human being is designed by God to seeking the success. The first servant and the second servant was successful in their business. But the third servant was not successful. And the final, we can find five times in the Gospels that Jesus repeat the same sentence with the same meaning. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 12, we can read, whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. In Matthew 25, 29, For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. In Mark chapter 4, 25, whoever has will be given more. In uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 18, therefore consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has, will be given more. Luke chapter 19, 26. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. I know that in the last decade, the church has problem with the theology of the prosperity. Because some preachers and writers and leaders and pastors have no uh, concept clear a clearly concept about the prosperity, they have no balance when teaching about it. But my message this morning is not about the theology of the prosperity. It's about the time that we are living and the blessing of God with purpose, not for selfish for, or to be pride about the blessing, no. It's for the purpose that God blessed us. And uh, certain is the true reality is 
every person wants to be improved. And every one of us wants to have more. But it's not only in financial or economic topics. I want to be more wisdom. I want to have or more wisdom. I, have, I want to have more health. I want to have more revelation of the word of God. I want to have more anointing. I want to have more people in my church. I want, I want to have more influence in my society. And the promise of God is who has received from the Lord, he will receive more. And this promise is for you. And uh, I want to present the difference between the first and second servant to the third servant. Because in that difference, we may find the secret to receive more from God. But more with purpose. Remember Abraham? The Lord said to Abraham, I will bless you and you will, ble will be a blessing. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Church, the Lord wants to bless you and to transform you, your life, in a blessing for the rest of the world. Hallelujah. Uh, and find four law. Um, in my family, there are many lawyers. And I find law for everywhere. <laughs> uh, the church need blessing to bless the rest of the world. This is the only way that do may fulfillment the great commission. We need the blessing of God. The first law that I find to receive more from the Lord is the law of management. May you say, may you say management? Amen. Thank you. The law of management. Recognize that we are managers. We are not the owner. The owner is the Lord. The, Lord, the, the owner is Jesus. The owner is the Father. The owner is God. We are only managers. God will give more to those who recognize that Everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. What we have is not ours. It all belongs to the Lord. Talents are the abilities that God has given us. Talents are the skills, the resources, the time, the opportunities from which we are only managers. Our life is not ours. Our lives belongs to our God. If we want to receive more, we must to recognize that everything belongs to God. We must manage carefully, wisely, and gracefully because everything belongs to the Lord. At the final of the parable, the man came and said to the uh, third servant, you should have, you should have given my money to the bankers. You receive the talents, but it's not yours. 
is mine. You are only the managers that the Lord has given to you. Uh, and most uh, deal, we must deal with the talents, with the ability of uh, as an administrator. In the uh, book of Psalms, David said, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The Lord and those who dwell therein. All the earth is the Lord. This is a, a beautiful building. It's an amazing that the Lord has done here. But it's it is not the church of Dr. Prince. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's a principle. Remember. Remember every moment in your life. All that you have. You have received. Paul says. All that we have. We receive. We have nothing that we know do not receive. All that you have, you receive. You have received. But the owner is the Lord. Amen. Your family, your time, your body, all belongs to God. Hallelujah. If this law is clearly in your mind and in your heart, you are preparing to receive more and more. The second law, the law of use. Doing business with what God gives us to us. The Bible states in the parable of the miners, do business till I come. Do business till I come. Resources will not come as fallen from heaven. Things will not come by chance. You must to do business with what you have in your hands. This is what the law of use is about. We must use what God has given us. The more you use what God has given you, the more you will be given by the Lord. Is the law of use. Use that the Lord has given you, and the Lord will give you more. The use of, usage of your talent does not wear it down. On the contrary, the more you use, the more you use the talent or the abilities or every uh, kind of, of things that the Lord has given you, the more that you use it, the more it increases. As we can notice, what happens, uh, for example, when a, a, a piano player, the more he plays, the better he does it. It doesn't mean that the more you play, it lessens your ability. No, at the contrary, the more you practice a foreign language, the better you will speak it. I said uh, my beloved, beloved brethren last night, if the Lord sent me again to Malaysia and uh, Dr. Prince give me a new opportunity to preach, you can see my improve in English. Because the more that you use the talent, the more that you improve and receive more. Hallelujah. Use, use your gift or your talents or your abilities for the Lord's sake and you will receive more. Hallelujah. Don't keep yourself what God has given you. 
Do not bury your talents under silence. Use it for the glory of his name. The usage of your talent prepares you your own future. The uses of your talent prepare your own future. The law of use will be ready your successful. Your future is in your hands if you use your time to pray and fasting, if you use your money for missions, if you use uh, your family or your house for sale, use that the Lord has given you and you will receive more. Well done, good and faithful servant. The usage, the practice, and the repetition all come from when there is something in the heart. We react according to what there is in our heart. God has given us a heart which wants to have more, to serve more, and to do more of God's work. In order to possess more things, we must be faithful we must live a disciplined life in seeking the Lord, in praying, in giving our offerings and tithe, and in participating in a small group. If you want to receive more, you must to be faithful in what God has given you. The good heart and faithfulness to God will help you to use your resources, resources to right way. And if you use your resources in the right way, this will prepare the way into progress. You make your own future. The Lord opens the door which no one can close for those with a faithful heart. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, uh, said Jeremiah. And the Lord said unto Joshua, be strong and courageous because uh, the conquer of the land depends on the state, the condition of the heart of the leader, Joshua. Your faithfulness prepares you for your own progress. Be faithful. Hallelujah. Oh, thanks, God. I, I am not sure that you are understanding me. You are so silent. <laughs> you know, uh, Latin American people, most in Panama, when uh, the preacher was delivering the word of God, uh, the people say amen, say hallelujah, say preach, Lord, hallelujah. Uh, we see the people, the people are receiving. But I know what happened in this place. <laughs> When I came, I, I, I wear a tie. And Dr. Prince uh, tell me he, he doesn't use a, wear a tie. And told him, in my tie is my anointing. <laughs> <laughs> but I when saw him without tie, I take away my tie. I, my anointing, gone. <laughs> and thank you for your kindness. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Amen. Really, really, you are very kind. I, th I am thinking you are suffering. 
You are in a struggle. <laughs> but I pray that the Lord bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The number three, the law of revelation. When a, when a preacher, when a preacher has not anything to say, the preachers count joke. The law of revelation, having a right concept, a right opinion, right concept of God. The mistake of the man who had his talent was his concept about God. This man hid his talent because he knew a different God that the other servants, the first and the second, knew. He brought God was a hard man. He thought God has a hard man. The concept of that servant was God is a hard man, an opportunist, unfair, and even cruel. He should not have the wrong concept of God. If we have not a right concept of God, we cannot expect that the Lord bless us. The right concept of God is that he always wants to give us more. This is the, the right concept. God is a God of blessing. When God creates the man, Adam and Eve, in the Eden, the Bible says he creates them and bless them. The first act of God in the, end, in the um, Garden of Eden was bless. Bless the man and woman. And the last act of Jesus before going to heaven was bless. He broke the apostles, the disciples, outside of Jerusalem, in Bethany, and the Bible says, rip up his hands and bless them. Even in my bad English, the Lord wants to bless you today because he is, his nature, his essence is bless. His creature, Lord, want to bless you today. You will receive divine healing today. You will receive divine authority today. Some of you will be going to another level today. I believe that the Lord has a new anointing for you today because his nature is blessed, his creation. Hallelujah. But the third servant has not the right concept because that is very important to study the Word of God, to study the Bible with the guidance and uh, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The law of revelation says the first and the second servant they believe that the Lord give us his talents to us and we need to use it and to present him the products 
the fruits of all work for him. But the third servant, in his theology, in his concept of God, God is opportunist, he's cruel. He wants uh, to harvest in a land who he didn't work. He thought uh, about God like a, a man unfair, hard man. God wants what is best for us. God wants what is best for us. God wants what is best for you. He wants you to have life abundantly. Uh, you know John 10.10, 10, and you may repeat uh, by memory, it is the desire of the Lord. The thief Uh, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Is the desire of God for us? May you say amen? amen. Are you happy with this promise? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I want to be here in, in earth serving to the Lord until the second coming of Jesus in good health because it's the desire of God. Beloved, I desire that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. It's the desire of God. Open your heart and open your mind to this revelation. Today is your day. Repeat. Today is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it because this day is a blessed day. Hallelujah. This day is day for my blessing. This day is the day that the Lord answer my prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. God is God of power who changed the, a tragedy into victory. He turns pain into joy. He turns tears into laughter. And from weeping, he brings worship. God is a generous God, which gives us all things so that we can enjoy them. Even when we fall, he does not treat us with the way we should be treated. The Lord gives us the best. The best is for us because the best come from the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a God that demands accountability for what he gets. However, when he demands accountability from us, it's not to take away what he has given you. He does it in order to reward because God is rewarder. Hallelujah. And the final law, the number four, the law of conquer. In order to have more, you need to conquer. You need to overcome. The first thing we must overcome is our own evil heart. For out of the heart, Proceed 
evil thoughts and more, says uh, Matthew chapter five, uh, 15, verse 19. The heart is deathful above all things. Who can know it? The problem with the third servant was his heart. I ask to the Lord, touch our heart, O Lord. Touch my heart today. Teach me. Cleanse me, O Lord. Give me a heart according to your heart. I need a new heart. But the Lord promised, give us a new heart and Today, this morning, the hand of the Lord is able to touch our heart and cleanse and uh, prepare it for the new blessing from heaven. The second uh, uh, thing we must overcome is negligence. The Lord said to the third servant, negligent, servant, negligent. We will never have more until we get rid of laziness out of our life. The contrary of Negligence is diligence. And the word of God said, the diligence one will be presented approved to the kings. Hallelujah. You will be behold to the kings and you will be presented approved. Hallelujah. We must defeat the spirit of Mediocrity, try your best to be diligent. We can see diligence in this church everywhere. The brothers, the pastors who attend us, excellent. The work is excellent. The Kindness, the amability. Our family are so impressed by the kind of the spirit of service uh, that is in, in this church. May God bless you and maintain your spirit of excellence in every area of your life because the Lord reward, rewards the excellence. The diligence is a man's precious possessions, uh, said Solomon. The third thing we must overcome is fear. The servant said, I was afraid. We must not to be afraid of the blessing. The Lord give us more to those who are not afraid to believe, nor those who are afraid to face the enemy. Do not to be afraid to put the faith in the hand of the Lord. Cast your bread upon the waters. Do not be afraid in a belief in the promise of God. The one who has not afraid of sowing goes out weeping carrying seed to sow. 
We must defeat, finally, the inactivity. The third servant hid the talent. He didn't work. He passed the time inactive. The talent has given you is to make it into money. Well, you should have put my money one deposit with the bankers so that when I return it, I will have received it, uh, receive it back with interest. Uh, Please, I need to you understand my position according to the word of God. The difference between the first and second servant than than to third servant was the inactivity. The first and the second trade, working with the talent. The third hit the talent. The Lord said, given the talent of the third servant to the first servant, and his Diplomas came because he who will he who has he will receive more. Amen. Um, and you want to know something? In the beginning of the parable, all the three servants receive talent. But when the owner, the man came, came back, he asked for money. Why? Because all talents became in money. All talents transformed in money. I asked last night to the people in the other church about two or three names. And every one of them knew uh, that name. Uh, did you hear about a, a man from, from Argentina called Leo Messi? Leo Messi has a grand talent. He's a very talented uh, soccer player. The talent of Leo Messi transformed in money. Maybe you hear about uh, another soccer player called Cristiano Ronaldo. He transformed his talent in money. Uh, give me the name of the best singer of Malaysia. And I tell you that the singer transform his talent in money. Give me the name of the best uh, surgeon, medical doctor in Malaysia. And I tell you that he transformed the talent in money. The church need money to do the work of the Lord. The picture presents a man who traveling before traveling, gave talents to his servants. But the man came back. That man is Jesus. Jesus went to heaven. But Jesus is coming back again. And when Jesus coming, he requests us about what we do or what we did with 
the blessing that he gave us. Before he went to heaven, Jesus said, go into the old nations and preach the gospel. Gospel of salvation. Gospel of deliberation. It is all our work preach the gospel, the gospel in the entire world, in the all nations. And the most important thing for us is use all that the Lord has given to us in this purpose to reach the unsaved people to preach the word of God to make disciples in every nation to expand the kingdom of God to present the love of the Lord to every creation and to give to every man and woman young people or all people to present to every one of them the opportunity to receive uh, to Jesus as a personal savior. Lord, I surrender all of unto you. Jesus. Give, oh Lord, to this church the best season from now on Give to the church the best season in the history of this church, O oh Lord. The prayer that the pastors, Pastor Petrina, has presented unto you for many years now will be answered all of the prayers in Jesus almighty name in Jesus almighty name thanks God and oh Lord I ask to you give us with your blessing all the resources resources that the church need to be fulfillment the goal more abundantly that the pastors and the leaders can imagine. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Be blessed, pastors. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your healing touch this morning, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your deliverance, Father, that you are setting people free. Lord, I thank you for a new spirit that you're putting within us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you're putting, that you're receiving us. And, de and as we dedicate ourselves to you, you are receiving our dedication, Lord. You are a good God. You will not fail us, Lord. You want to use us, Lord. You have given us talents. We don't want to be lazy. We want to be diligent with the talents that you've given us. And with the talent, Lord, as we use it, you will multiply it. Hallelujah. You will prosper us with those talents, Lord. And this prosperity will not be a selfish lived but a prosperity that will bless the kingdom of God bless those that come in contact with us that we will be a testimony a witness a witness of God's miracle in our lives hallelujah hallelujah we praise you Jesus we praise you Jesus God is good